All right, so uh, if you're watching this video, then you're interested in RC cars, you're already into RC cars, uh, which is fabulous. Uh, now, one thing that a lot of people leave out, right? It's very common to hear number one upgrade, number two upgrades, top three upgrades. I mean, I've done a, I think it was a top three upgrades for a Fortech before, uh, but some thing for say terrain cars, buggies, trucks, anything that you build or anything that has adjustability to it, the one of the best things you can actually get isn't something that goes on the car. It's actually a setup kit. So a setup station is really the best investment that you can do. So before you go out there, let's just say you buy a kit. Before you go out there and you decide to buy, I don't know, the latest and the greatest motors, uh, you should get a setup kit or get a simple system before you spend, you know, who knows how much money on a system, buy a setup kit. Now, I don't I don't remember how much the setup kit cost. Maybe it cost 90 or maybe 120. It wouldn't be more than 120. It's probably closer to 90, 100, 110. Now, this particular one is made by SkyRC, and uh, this will definitely improve your uh, lap time. So if you're racing, even if you're just messing around the street, uh, and you're just flexing on fr friends, sometimes even if you have, say, a slower system, having a setup kit and a proper setup on the vehicle, or at least a better setup, uh, a symmetrical setup on the vehicle, this will actually help a lot more with your touring car, whatever it is. Now, I figured I would do this video simply because uh, I did break a knuckle so anytime you experience a hard crash, especially if you break something, you should really put it back on the setup station. I mean, you should do it from time to time regardless. But let me go over the setup kit and I'll talk about how these things, just the basics on the setup kit. So this kit comes with these tools, not these over here, these are extras. Uh, and it comes, I put them over here with these nuts and screws. I'll show you what these are. So these, I always put them back in the bag. Uh, these little screws, these hold these components together. These little nuts, these go to the wheels. Uh, so that's what we have right in here. Now, this plate, this will be for your toe in, toe out. Uh, so this is an important plate. But these, these are one of the best things you can get. Uh, they have these little ball bearings and the ball bearings are just to make it smooth so that these things can roll in and out uh, when your car's on them. So do not drop these. Uh, from time to time, you can oil them. Uh, if you do put oil on them, put a very, very light oil just so it moves very, very smoothly. You can use something like this, for example. Uh, get the lightest oil. But here we go. All right, right here. So these notice there's no ball bearings. That's because these are the ones that are fixed. Uh, these will just be fixed onto the board. And these other ones, these are the ones, this is actually where your wheels attach. Your wheels are going to attach right in here. These are gonna be the ones that are going to be moving in and out. Uh, so this does your toe in, toe out. These do your camber. And that's something very, very important that a lot of people neglect, especially when starting. And there's a variety of reasons why it is incredibly important to do this. And one of the reasons, so let me put the car this way, is let's just say the camber's off. This one is straight up and this one's leaning in. So what's gonna happen is, this is the front, when you take a turn, uh, the vehicle, let's just say you're two degrees here and this is zero. Uh, the vehicle, as you turn weight shifts, this tire is going to go, I'm gonna use tape, it might be easier to use uh, tape, actually this one's larger than an actual tire, I do have tires. But if it's angled two degrees, it'll be like this. But as soon as you take that turn and weight transfers that direction, since this is the outer tire, this will go somewhat flat, which means you're going to get a larger contact surface. So you're gonna get quite a lot of grip compared to if it's standing this way. 
And then what you're gonna notice is this one's standing, so it's gonna turn very nicely uh, to the right, for example. But because it's zero, uh, I said to the right, I meant left. Uh, but when you turn right, what you're gonna notice is this outer left tire is actually going to go this way, and you're gonna be rolling on the edge, uh, so it's not gonna grip as much, it's gonna slide off. Or maybe you have too much camber in and the tire never sits flat and then you end up wearing the tire incredibly fast right here on the edge, on the inner edge. And then you're just destroying your tires. The, the other thing that can happen too is when you're rolling straight, one of the tires may have a little more grip than the other, depending if you have a little bit of toe out or toe in. Uh, depending on how the suspension moves, keep in mind that the ground isn't perfect. Uh, one of the tires may grip more than the other. Keep in mind these do have a spool in the front and then all of a sudden the car just pulls. So as you get up to speed, the car is just going to try to pull one way, then you'll correct the other and it'll correct, but then it'll pull a little farther. Uh, so those are some of the issues that you can have and the same applies to the rear. Uh, because the rear may not want to rotate very much when you're taking a turn, or it may over-rotate uh, depending on where you're going. So if you, if the car, let's just say, does something when you're turning right, and it does it when you're turning left, the adjustments are probably symmetrical. But if it does something more or less going one way versus the other, there's probably something wrong. And that's why setup stations are important. Uh, so. That being said, uh, let's go ahead and show you. So we have these here. Now, like I said, I do keep the bags, mainly because I don't like these rolling, rolling about. And then we have the nuts. So these are the, the wheel nuts, essentially. And they're this size, so you can hand tighten, loosen them. They do not have to be very tight. Now these, you will notice there's a threaded hole that's gonna go right in this bearing. So when you place these, this little tab here, there we go, that will go in here. And that's going to be the indicator, notice the line. So this will just go in here. And when you're assembling everything, just assemble it softly. Don't, if this doesn't want to screw in, don't try screwing it in. The last thing you want is to cross thread things. And do not over tighten this. The last thing you want to do is break this off. This is, uh, there's an actual screw in there. So if you do mess up the screw, uh, you can replace it. The only thing is, this is aluminum. Chances are you're going to screw this part first. So don't over tighten it. And then this should move lightly. Now you're going to assemble them. So let me go ahead and do this. Now, one of the things that you're going to notice is two of them are going to face one way, two of them are going to face the other direction. So you want to make sure that you match them because you are going to have a left and a right. Uh, so as you can see these, these face the same direction. So we'll have them, we'll place them there. Do not put thread lock. You do not need thread lock on these. So don't, don't bother. But now you can see that this one faces the opposite direction. Now, something else that I need to point out is make sure that your board is one flat. The other thing too is run a ruler. If you have just a straight edge, say a long ruler that you know is true, run it across the board to make sure that the board is true. Because if your board is warped, uh, you're not going to get very good measurements. And I'm calling them measurements because that's what you're doing. You're measuring the degrees of toe. Well, toe with that, and then camber with this. Uh, but here we go. Now, once you have them like this, it's going to be up to you. If you're just going to be looking at the car from one side, well, then just face them this way. If you're gonna be looking at the car from the opposite direction, uh, then you can use this. This one would go over here. 
And then you can deal with the car going this way, you can deal with the car going that way. So if you're gonna be flipping the car, uh, that's a possibility. I'm going to leave them this way so that they are all... Actually, given the way the table is, it'll be easier for me to do this because I have to put my head on this other side and that, this other side. Uh, but that's something to keep in mind. Now, I'm going to go ahead and do this. Now, for this adjustment, because I'm not checking droop, uh, I have the shocks on. So the shocks are on. If I were checking droop, then I would undo the shocks. I would either undo, well, the bottom. I would undo the bottom. That way the arms would be free. Uh, but I'm just tightening these. And again, you do not have to tighten them hard. These things are not going to be, the car's not going to be running. You're not worried about a wheel falling off. That's, that's another key thing. So these just go in snug and that's it. That's all you need. And the reason why they're going in snug is you just want to make sure there's no play so that when you make your adjustments, you know those adjustments are true. Now, something that I need is actually, I need the battery. And use whatever battery you're using, install that battery. All right. Uh, now the assumption here is that the body's going to distribute weight evenly. Uh, you don't have to assume uh, but that's really the assumption. But definitely install the battery. I mean, if you really want to be nitpicky, I guess you could put the wires in. I am not going to, uh, but here we go. So I'm compressing the suspension and now I'm just going to check the reading. So let's go ahead and check the reading real quick. All right, well, that one's at two. So that one's just a little off, and that one happens to be the one that I broke. All right, so it's about, let's see. All right, so you see something's way off. And it's compressed again. All right, so definitely those need adjusting. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust them uh, because I want them to be two all around. So this one you can see is just under, this one over here is over and it's, it's significantly, I mean, that's almost a degree that it's over. So these are some of the adjustments that uh, need to be done. So let me go ahead and do the adjustments and all you do is you just turn the turnbuckles until they're adjusted. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do them off camera, just the video it doesn't take that long. And then I'll show you the degrees again. But the main thing is when you're doing it, you do a little turn, and then you compress the suspension. Now, normally you would use a wrench if you have a turnbuckle. This one, I actually have to use a driver and it's a little driver with a ball. So it's a little more challenging. That's why I'm doing it off camera because I have to remove one, make the adjustment here. Uh, actually I actually have to remove this one, make the adjustment, uh, put this back on, check everything. So as of now, this is the only one that's fine for now. I'm gonna make an adjustment here. Once I make the adjustment here, I'll go back, check the front, and oh, maybe I'll just do it like that. Now, I do not have the one with the little ball. I've been debating on whether or not to get it mainly because, well, see this, I could use an Allen wrench, which is right here. So maybe I'll just do that. I prefer drivers over Allen wrenches, but in this case, Allen wrench is really the best way to go. Now, if you remember the front, the front, okay, so the front, I have to open this up. So if you looked at the measurement, the line was a little farther that way, which means that I have to open the top to bring the bottom close. So if it measures too far out that way, you actually have to open the front so that it does this, because remember it's pivoting in the center. So you do the opposite. So if you need to shorten the bottom, you lengthen the top. 
if you need to lengthen the bottom, you shorten the top. That's the way it goes. So here, I need to lengthen the top. I'm just gonna put my Allen wrench and uh, or lengthen the top. I have to go left so that the screw goes, actually, no, I have to go right. So I'm pushing the screw in in order And the only reason why I'm compressing the suspension twice is to double check, make sure it's coming back to the same settings. Now, you want to do this after you've already rebuilt your shocks or you know replaced oil, whatever it is. Maybe I'm doing this wrong. Hold on. Ah, I am doing this wrong. So I'm noticing the screw is actually coming in when I'm going right. All right, it's the threading. That makes sense. So I was looking at the gauge, now I'm at three degrees instead of two. All right. So if you had a regular camber link, then you wouldn't worry about it. So let's go back the amounts that I've gone this way. So I'm going to be going left. So I do apologize. There we go. See, now it's going inside. And if you look at it now, so that one still reads two. That one now reads two. All right, so the front is set. Now I'm gonna go to the rear. And after I do the rear, I'll double check the front again. Uh, but let's see, so the rear, this one needs to be opened up just a little. All right, so that one reads two. And the front still read two, so that's good. Now let's see, now we need to go to this side. So this side is reading three. So because it's reading three, uh, this one's way off, so I have to push it quite a bit. Uh, so I'll have to go. Farther more. Let's see. So let's go farther. A little farther. All right, now it reads two, 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 and two. Now, uh, it doesn't have to be two. I just like to set it at two. That's the reason why. But now it's at two. And I have a two, and there's a two, and there's a, well, we can't really 
because of the angle. I'm kind of stuck here, I can't go farther. But there's a two. So now uh, everything's set at two. So now the next thing to do is to work with troop. Uh, or you could do the toe, that's fine. Now for the toe, one of the things that you need to do is you need to have the, the battery in for the front, not the rear. For this, let me see if I can turn the car. There's enough space, there's a little space. Uh, well, it's, it's gonna help. Well, let's see, maybe you can see. So you can see the measurements here and this will go right here. So you have the lines right back here. It's still in the camera. Uh, I guess I'll do it upside down. Give me a moment. This will be better. All right. So uh, these lines go to these little marks and this will just go here and then you can slide back and forth. Now, the reason why you slide it is so you can deal with one side first versus the other. So here, if I slide it, oh, I'm hitting the body clip, no wonder. Let me get these off. I was wondering why it wasn't going all the way through. All right, here we go. So you slide it all the way to the side and then uh, you read the degrees. So right now I'm at four. So I actually have four in the rear. Uh, if you give it more toe in in the rear, so this is toe in, it'll slow down the rotation. If you give it more outer toe, it'll speed up the rotation. So what that means is, uh, let's just say everything else is perfect, but your car and your weight distribution is perfect. You're about a 50-50 weight. Uh, let's just say you were exactly at a 50 weight and your car is still sort of sliding, the rear is still sliding. And let's just say it's not your driving. More often than not, it's probably your driving. Uh, but let's pretend it's not. And you're at zero. So what you do is you tow, tow them in and that slows down the rotation so that you don't spin out as much. Now, if you want more rotation, then you would go out, so you'd go to zero. Uh, now, the issue is if you actually tow out, you go beyond zero, even at zero, at high speeds, that rear will start wanting to fishtail. So you generally want some tow in, uh, although I don't think I want four degrees. I may go down to three. Uh, I think three degrees will be fine. Uh, let's see what the other side is. The other side is, oh yeah, this is way way off. I uh, want to try, see, wait, no. Let's see, one, two, okay, so that side is at three, this side is at four, so that's an issue. And this is why you put on a set, actually, no, this one's two, and this one's four. So this is way off. Uh, and this is where your Allen wrench comes in. Now, uh, so this is at two, this is at four, I want them both at three. You know what? Maybe I can try it at two. No, I'm gonna go to three. So that means that uh, this one's at three, so I need to close this link, right, to bring it in. This one's at four, that means I have to extend this link. Uh, now, use my, this is actually one of the things that I like, instead of using pills, uh, so some of you know that I used to have a Yokomo, it was pills. Now I just have links, which is something that I like about the X4. Something I liked about the Serpent as well, uh, long ago. All right. I don't like holding my wrenches this way. farther. Just a little, and then I'll be at three. Uh, 
and there we go. So I'm at three. Now, uh, this wasn't the original point of the video, but since we're here, uh, one of the things that I want you to notice, so remember uh, I'm, this one is now three degrees in, and remember I'm towed in, sorry, it's, it's towed in three degrees and my camber is two degrees. Pay attention to what happens here when the suspension compresses. So I actually have, uh, I have just under one degree of camber gain. So I actually have camber gain and it's just under a degree, which is what I want. I don't want too much gain, but I want some gain. Why? Because the car is going to shift. It's going to go up on that outer tire. Uh, so that's something else to keep in mind. Now I'm going to go over here. Now over here, I'm going to go the opposite because I want to open this one up. There's way too much. Uh, let me just double check, make sure it's that. Yeah, it's way too much. Uh -huh. All right, so that's going to be about, about a, over a turn. Now again, depending on your degrees of setup, do not take my numbers and then put them on your car thinking it's gonna do wonders because your driving style may be different than my driving style. Uh, so maybe you'll want more, maybe you'll want less. It depends. Maybe you're driving a faster car, maybe you're driving a slower car, depending on the class that you're driving. So all of those factors have to be taken into consideration. Uh, let's see. What? Let me just make sure I have the. Oh my god. Uh, I forgot. That's right. X ray for some reason installed some of the other way, so I have to go back. That was at almost five degrees, and I was trying to wonder why. Uh, so, when I built this car, if you actually wa build, uh, watch the build series, one of the things that I found interesting is that in the manual, it did not have. There's these little marks, and generally you put them all to the same side. But for x-ray, for some reason, I wanted them in the opposite direction. And I can't figure out why. The only thing I can think of is if you have the car this way, right, you're facing it this way, you would turn the same direction as if you turn the car around, you're going the same direction. So uh, instead of working on the car front to back and then forward, tightening, rear, loosening, or vice versa, you're working on the car on the side. So when you're on the right side of the vehicle, versus the other side of the vehicle. All right, so now I should be back at four. Let me just double check, all right, I'm back at four. So let me keep going, it'll be about another turn. All right, not quite a turn, but Let's check this out. Ooh, a little too far. All right, let's bring it back. I mean, it's not much, but still. We're almost at three. Perfect. Perfect. All right, so that's three. Uh, and that is it. Now, this is still at two, that's at two. I'm also checking these, making sure these are still... All right, so I'm just going back, making sure everything's at two. Uh, so I'm fine, I guess it wasn't much of an adjustment. Now for the front, now the front gets a little tricky, not really. Uh, so what you want for the front is you actually want to power on the vehicle for the front. And the reason why is, let me take these pins just in case they get in the way. So if you try to do this with the power off, you, as you're adjusting this, like your steering can move. So what will happen is, let's just say you run the adjustment, you're thinking here, it's like, oh, I'm just over five degrees. Uh, now keep in mind, I turned the steering. And then you go over here like, oh my God, I am under three and a half degrees, something like that. Well, now you make the adjustments, but let's just say now you move the steering the other way. 
Oh my God, I went over. So one of the important things is uh, for the front steering, you actually want to run power. And that's very, very important. So make sure that you have your transmitter. You put in a battery in there because you have to do this step with power. And then make sure you're in the correct channel. So this one, I know I'm in VTA, so that's the car. Uh, something else too is this would actually be the perfect time for you to zero your trim and then make adjustments so that everything is zero. So especially if you ran out of trim, uh, let's see, so I need to go into the trim real quick. See how much trim I have. Uh, where is it? Oh, past it. That's not too bad. 38, I can leave it there. But now you power up the car. There. to disconnect the fan, disconnect both fans. Do not hit the throttle. Don't hit the throttle. Ooh, that's something important. Uh, so let's see. So right now I am running toe in. Uh, This is way out of whack. So this is this way, which would be possibly a trim adjustment. So if I do trim, let's see if I go, actually I'll do this. Just gonna change everything a little. Uh, so one of the things that I did is I brought the trim down. But you also have to be careful because you don't want these links to be way, way off. So I'm actually going to grab uh, my calipers and just measure the links. So if the links are the same size, I'm just going to deal with the trim. If they're different size, I'm going to try to put them in the same size and then see w where the trim is. So let me just get my calipers. Now, this is another very important tool. Uh, just get some nice digital calipers. Uh, I, I would not get calipers that are too inexpensive because sometimes they're just too cheap. That's the reason why. Uh, so for about $30, you should be able to get a decent pair. All right, so that's $25.89. up it's two millimeter difference so that means I should close this one or open this one up uh, which I'm gonna open this one up now uh, let's see so first I'll deal with this and then I'll deal with the toe things too is just check to see what the change is uh, okay so because I opened it up now this one's way in but this one should still be out uh, which means that if I were to use the trim all right so I'm going to have to add some right trim so Something that I may have to do, and I know I tried this before, move the horn over, or I can change the length here, which I will actually change the length here 
And let's see, so do I wanna go, I wanna make it longer. All right, so let's go ahead and change the length here. I still need to match this. Actually, before I do that, let me just match the two. Uh, so this was 26.3, this was 27. Uh, so let's see, let's go. Just hold it here and do it off. Normally you don't want to do this, but this thing fell off, which means that uh, I'm probably gonna want to get a new one of these because it shouldn't fall off that easy. I know I, yeah, I'm being nitpicky, but still. Six, eight. I believe this was at 26, three. 26, four. All right. So, and there we go. All right. So they're both the same. Now, quick little note when you measure, you want to make sure you're pretty straight. So let's just say straight like this because if you do this, so a little higher here, a little lower here, you're going to sl you're going to get a slightly different measurement potentially. Uh, all right, so my lengths are the the same. So now I can go ahead and deal with this and see. Uh, first, the trim. Okay, so uh, all right. So my steering is this way. So I need to trim it back the other way. I'm going to have to remove this. All right, so let me go ahead and do that off camera. Actually, no, I just have to lengthen this. All right, so let me make that arm longer. This one right here. So that's the next step. Now, uh, let's see, right, so, of course that's a different size. Uh, here, give me a moment. All right, uh, so, so right now, let's see, this side's at zero, this side is just beyond zero. So I have a little bit of toe out, uh, not a big deal, but, I still want to lengthen this. And, and I'll show you why in a bit. Well, I guess I could show you now. That's the reason why. So I'm at 52, I don't wanna be at 52. Not that it matters that much. Uh, I just wanna be as close as possible to zero. But you also don't want this to be too, too long or too, too short because, well, then the servo may or may not reach. So that's something else to pay attention to. All right, so let's dial some back. All right, see, so that little adjustment I'm now, oops, you can see, I'm down to 30 on that adjustment. And, All right, so that's a bad idea. I have to take this off the car. Take the, well, I could just do this. And then, so I'm gonna have to adjust my endpoints, but I'll do that after. I'll adjust my endpoints after. So once you do this, you're gonna have to adjust, well, pretty much everything. I'm gonna check that I'm at two, everything after, uh, but, just by doing that, now I know that the servo has more than enough travel. Uh, this is not binding, which is important. All right, good stuff, good stuff. Actually, that works out very well. All right, so now I can work on these. Uh, so, actually, I'm gonna leave it where it is. And then I'll decide if I want a little bit of more toe in or toe out. So I have a very slight, very, very slight toe out, very minor. I don't know if I want to go with a degree or not. I'll go with a degree. So in order to do that, I need to shorten these. Uh, so let's go ahead and shorten them. Turned off power just so I can move it. Clip it back on. All right. There we go. Um, 
almost a degree. This one's at a degree. All right, so this one I have to lengthen just a bit. Perfect, perfect, okay. All right, so I'm at a degree toe out now. So at this point, all right, so I'm still at two in the rear. I'm gonna check the front. Uh, the front, I am still at two. Uh, and oh, that's the front. Just double checking the rear. All right, so that's three. That's three. Uh, all right. Uh, so that's it. So at this point, uh, the car is set up, and I'm only using thirty on my transmitter. I could keep working it until I'm down to zero. I don't want to. Uh, it's really not that important. But uh, that is it. So uh, some of the best tools that you can actually get once you get an RC, I would say budget for calipers, digital. You don't have to spend too much. Uh, 30, 40 dollars will get you a really nice price. If you're buying calipers for 10 dollars, uh, tools, you kind of get what you pay for. Uh, but definitely get a setup station. There's a variety of different setup stations. This one happens to be by Sky RC. Uh, this one, like I said, is probably only about $90. Uh, now, the next thing that doesn't, many times doesn't come with a setup station is going to be these blocks. Now, these are a centimeter blocks. These are really for the droop, uh, but let me go ahead and show you. So at this point, I have to take uh, you can take the battery out at this point because it's not going to matter. The car's going to be sitting on blocks. Uh, so, let's get to it. Now, Droop, Droop is the distance. So if you look at the chassis, if the chassis is level, let's just say this is it. And, oh man, this isn't really gonna help now, is it? Uh, oh, here we go. This is the chassis, this is the arm, this is the arm. Uh, droop is the distance. So you can have negative droop, positive droop. So it's how far the arm, this point, goes from this point. So it's the difference between the two hinges. That's, that's what you're measuring. Uh, so we will go ahead and remove these. And I'll set these off to the side. And always, uh, so your setup station, just take it apart and put it away. And the reason why is you do not want to accidentally drop any of the pieces. And the reason why is you don't wanna run the risk of, let's just say they fall on a hard floor, hard surface. You don't want to run the risk of accidentally bending any of these components and damaging them. Because then your setup station, to be honest, is uh, worthless. Uh, then you might as well just get a new one. So that's something to keep in mind. Now this setup station, you can get to a variety of different places. Some hobby shops do sell them, and then there's a variety of places online where you can get them as well. Uh, this particular one, I do not remember where I acquired it. But it is one that I recommend because it's definitely one of the least expensive options that, well, does the job. Uh, that's the reason why. Now, yes, I am going to work on another RC after this, but I would rather put this away, work and then finish off this car and then take it back out, use it on the other one. Why? Uh, in my mind, my tools will last longer. I'll just take care of them a little more. Uh, so that's really, really the reason why. Uh, so this will go in here, these are in the bags. And like I said, the reason why I put them in the bags is so they don't accidentally fall out. I mean, there are these little gaps in there they could fall out. Uh, this will just go in here. And this is plastic. Uh, so that is something. My biggest concern is sliding this in and out. We'll scratch off the numbers so far. I just you know, slide it in and out. Uh, but let's go ahead and put that in there. All right, so we have these and then I have a step gauge. I actually have different ones to use. All right. 
Uh, some RCAs, for example, this came with one of my B6 buggies. It comes with something like this. Uh, this is already built in. Well, it's a little taller though. I'll be slide that in. So this would go in the chassis in the arms. I'm not using that one though. Uh, all right. So for this, uh, remove the shocks. Now, some people do it with the shocks on. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, I mean, if it works, it works, right? That That is perfectly fine. But if you remove the shocks, you'll get a more accurate reading. And the reason why is because the shocks are not holding the arm. That's the reason why. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that because the shocks do have a certain length. Now, keep in mind, you might be thinking, well, who cares? Why just the droop if the length of the shock is going to determine everything? And I understand that uh, logic. And I mean, don't get me wrong. It, it makes sense for somebody to have that opinion. Uh, the only thing is that keep in mind that there's flex in the vehicles. That's the reason why. So once you start, let's just say, compressing the suspension hard, there's going to be some flex. Some of the arms, these you can get medium flex. Uh, you can get uh, so flexible arms, stiffer arms. So all of that is going to change. That's the reason why you still want to go through the hoops and adjust the droop, even if the shock lengths are the same and will never change, hypothetically speaking. Why? Because the flex of the chassis, the flex in the arms, all of this is going to play a role. So you want to make sure that you limit these variables uh, as much as possible. So these just go under the chassis. And that's a centimeter. And then take my driver. One of the things I always find fascinating is uh, this is a three millimeter driver. My smallest car uses the biggest driver. Um, here we go. Now I do have spacers, so I did remove the spacer as well. Make sure you don't lose those or don't forget to put them back on, uh, which is what I'm removing now. So I have to turn that transmitter off. All right, so now this is off. I'm going to go sort of at an angle. And that means that these are now free. So at this point, I can now use the gauge and I can go ahead and just slide it in right through the side. That's, that's about a 4.8. Four point six. So I'm actually going to. Uh, so if you look at this, uh, sort of counterintuitive. So the the smaller the number, the more droop, based on the sketch, right? Because the arms falling more. Uh, so if you think about, you have that ten centimeter block. Now you're four millimeters above. You're four point two above. You're six point above. So that means that the arms are drooping less. Uh, so I'll go with a 4.6. So I'm going to go ahead and add droop. I need a two millimeter driver for this one. And you have the little droop screws in here. So uh, because I want it to droop, I want to tighten the screw to pull it back in the arm. So really small increments, really small increments. And one of the things that is very important, I mean, this step is incredibly important and I'm barely turning the driver. I'm not sure you can tell on the camera, but if you do a really big turn, let's just say you did a quarter turn. Oh, you'd be surprised what a quarter, a quarter turn does. Even an eighth of a turn makes a big difference. All right, let's just 
just double check the other side. Right, perfect. Uh, and that's pretty much it for the droop. So at this point, go ahead and just put the spacers and then rebuild it. Now I'm going to check the front. Actually, I won't do this yet. I'll check the front. Now, something I'm not going to do in this video is check the tweak of the car. Uh, but that's something else you may want to consider doing. Uh, so let me go ahead and remove this. Oops, it's a three milliliter. And in the front, I do not have spacers. There we go. All right. And if you're wondering why I'm doing both sides instead of just one, it's, it's a habit. You probably don't need to do that, but they are connected with a sway bar, so that's the reason why I just push both of them up instead of just one. It's about a 5.6. Uh, so this one, uh, so I want to be about a millimeter front to rear. So this one's a 5, this is a 4.6, 4.6, 5.6, 6, 5, 5.8. This one needs to droop a little more. And the reason why the droop is important, again, if you're taking a turn one side or the other, if one side droops a little more than the other, the side that droops more is going to get more traction than the side that droops less, uh, just because of the way it droops. So if you think of it, let's just say this arm droops a lot more. and I'm taking a turn this way and this droops a lot more. This tire is going to be in contact with the asphalt a little longer than for example, if we go here and this one droops less, right? This one's going to lift when I'm turning this way. So you're gonna lose traction off this tire sooner. So the thing is that when you're turning left and right, it's not gonna be as predictable as to how much input because the amount of acceleration and turning is going to be different going left to right, which is why you want the droop to be about the same. Why? So when you're turning, the amount of lift, how, how fast this tire lifts off the pavement or removes weight off of it, right, and the turning is equal to this one so that you know you have a better idea of the speed of when how you can enter and exit the corner. That's the reason why. Uh, so I want to add more troop. Let's go ahead and loosen this. Just a little. Perfect. All right. Uh, and that is it. So getting one of these, uh, now you don't have to get the hoodie brand. I, I just, I did, uh, you don't have to, but this is something you can do. Uh, if you get something like this, the Sky RC, this is something that I got as well. Uh, just get a centimeter block. So get another pair of those blocks and then just put the centimeter block on top and just slide it this way. So if you compare it to this here, it's already built. It's already built in. So four, four, oops, sorry. That's how you damage tools. Uh, but if you look at this, the reason why I got this is I get the 3.8 for some adjustments versus this only goes down to 4.2 increments. They go 0.2 increments, but I mean, uh, the steps, here we go. So you're looking at the same thing, except for now I have a six, eight, and a seven for different cars. Uh, but that's really it. So you could get, you know, Sky RC tends to be more affordable. Hoodie, to be honest, is a higher end brand name. Uh, stuff is expensive. It's, it's really expensive. Uh, but uh, those are the basics. So uh, tools, really basic tools. Uh, once again, for RC, when you're getting into this, it's, it's, to be honest, it's better for you to get a second-hand car that's inexpensive than a brand new chassis. And assuming you have a budget and invest the rest of the money on, number one, a setup station. Setup station is a must. Two, a pair of digital calipers, just some nice digital calipers. These are 
uh, relatively inexpensive, to be honest. I, I don't remember the price, maybe $40. I have no, I honestly do not have the recollection. And get a droop gauge. And that's really it. Everything is going to be under $200, if I remember correctly. Uh, but that would be, to be honest, that is the best investment that you can make uh, with RC. So again, uh, if it's within your budget, sure, get a new chassis, but you're going to perform better with an outdated, outdated chassis. Uh, let's just, so this is the X4, T4, just get a T4. They're inexpensive, get a setup station. You're gonna do better with the T4 and the setup equipment than you will with an X4 just trying to eyeball everything. I mean, and when I mean difference, I'm talking about say two laps uh, within five minutes. I mean, that's how much difference it can make. It can make even more if you're really not that good at eyeballing things. So again, some of the tools that you need. Uh, I hope this was useful, or at least entertaining. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Oh, 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 oh,